Hello students, welcome back to the next session of Software Engineering. In today's session, we shall be continuing with the first chapter related to unit number 4, in which we will be discussing about testing strategies and debugging. So, what do we mean by testing? Testing is basically checking if the software that we have developed is working correctly or not. And debugging is basically fixing errors that we find during the testing. So, with this particular knowledge, let us understand a concept which is called as the testing strategy. So, testing strategy is basically like a step-by-step -step plan to check if the software is working correctly or not. So, it is. it will basically help us to avoid bigger problems later. So, in the initial stages only, we will be able to identify and fix the errors. Now, why do you think this te testing strategy is important to us? The first thing is, it will help us to prevent bigger issues later. The second is, it is saving our time. Third is, it is making sure that whatever software we have developed, is easy to use as well as it is al also meeting the user expectations. So, because of this, the testing strategy is important to us. Now, let us understand the various steps that are involved in testing strategy. See, basically, if you want to test any software, it, it happens in various steps. The first step you have is understanding the requirement. So, firstly, you have to know what the software is actually supposed to do. Only then you will be able to plan. The second one is create a plan. So, here is where you will decide how to test, what are the tools that we have to use, who will be actually performing this testing, all this will be planned here. The next is design the test cases. So, here you will be creating some check boxes as to which part of the software should be actually check, okay, or the test. The next one you have is set up the test environment. So, here you will be making a environment where which will be similar to how users will be actually using our software. The next one you have is run the test. So, here you will be testing for the errors. You will be performing issues. You will also, I mean, you will actually try to make a mistake and you will check if that mistake is actually caught while you are testing. So, that is what you will be doing in the run the tests. The next one you have is fix issues. So, you will be finding errors. You will be fixing it and again you will be testing. That is called as fix errors. The next one you have is user testing. So, here you will give your software to few of the real users. They will try the software and they will see if it is working properly or not. The next one you have is document everything. So, whatever you have tested, the plans, the results and all, everything will be documented. Be, be, uh, by that particular document, you will analyze it and you will prepare a report. Okay, You will summarize everything and you will check what what had gone correct, what did not, uh, what had gone wrong, everything you will prepare in a report. So, with the help of this report, you will learn and improve. Okay, so with the help, with the feedback that you get from this particular report, you will improve the testing in the next time. So, these are the various steps that are involved in the test strategy. Now, let's talk about the types of testings that are done in this test strategy. So, basically, while performing testing, we will do four types of testing, unit testing, integration testing, system testing and validation testing. So, let us look into the details of it. So, what do we mean by unit testing? So, unit testing is like basically testing the individual pieces or the small pieces of the software to make sure they are working properly or not. Like for example, say suppose you have something like a form page here. Okay, in form page, Somewhere in the bottom, you have one button which is called as the submit button. Okay. So, if you are checking this particular submit button, then that is called as the unit testing. Right. So, when you are performing this particular unit testing, your unit testing will use something called as drivers and stubs. Now, what do you mean by drivers and stubs? See, generally what will happen is while you are performing this unit testing, in some cases, your whole software will not be ready. Okay. So, when it is not ready to test a particular page, say suppose it needs some other page as a support and that some other page is not available, then your drivers and stubs will act as the dummy pages, which are not yet being created. Okay. So, what do we mean by driver? Driver is basically like a temporary program. Like say suppose you have a, a login feature. Okay. You have a page here, login page in which you will be having username, you will be having password and you will be having a button which is called as login. Okay. Now, uh, I have to enter data into it and when I say login, the details have to be into the database. 
Now say suppose, imagine that you want to test this login feature, but the whole website is not yet ready. So what your driver will do, driver will be now sending the inputs here. So it will send the username, it will send the password, okay, and it will test the login button that is called as the driver. Now let's talk about something which is called as the stubs. Stubs are nothing but they are like temporary replacements for unfinished parts of the system. So now let us imagine say suppose you have a shopping cart here okay in which people will be selecting some items they will be sending it to the cart and from the cart it will be going to the payment gateway. Now let us assume that payment gateway is not yet ready. So it, it is not yet being developed. So what your stub will do? Your stub will be now pretending as a payment gateway. Okay, so it will be giving you fake responses like, you know, payment successful. Okay, so basically drivers and stubs are like dummy pieces, which will be helping us to test some parts of the software, though our whole software is not yet ready. That is called as drivers and stubs. Now let us talk about the second type of uh, testing which is called as the integration testing. So integration testing is basically checking if different parts of the software are working together smoothly. So if bet, best example you can take is say suppose uh, I have clicked on the login page. So I have entered username, I have entered password, now I clicked on login. So when I click on login, if these details are valid details, then my login page should redirect me to the home page. Okay. So if my login page is successfully redirecting me to this particular home page, then that is called as the integration testing. So I'm testing here whether these two web pages, okay, are connected together properly or not. That is called as the integration testing, right? So in integration testing, we will be performing two methods here, top-down testing and bottom-up testing. So what do you mean by this top-down testing? This is basically, uh, it starts testing the bigger parts first, okay? And then it will go to the smaller parts. Like for example, it will start with the home page. Okay, it will use some stubs if there are any uh, missing features like a cart, settings and all. And then it will start digging into the inner parts. That is called as the top down. So from top, we will be moving on to the bottom. So what is the topmost page in your website? Home page is the topmost page where it will be having all the menus. So first home page will be tested. After home page is completed, one of the menu button will be clicked. That particular page will be tested. Then after that, the second home page button will be, the second menu button will be checked. Okay. So say suppose this is my home page, which is having some, say suppose some login page, it is having some details page, it is having some contact page. These pages are there in my home page. So first home page will be checked. Once it is successful, my login page will be checked. Then after it is successful, my details page will be checked. Once that is successful, my contact page will be checked. So from top to bottom, if we are going doing this testing, that is called as the top down testing. Now coming on to bottom up testing. Bottom up testing is like starting from the inner parts and then coming out. Okay. So like for example, adding items to the cart. Okay. You start by add, adding items to the cart. Instead of home page, you will directly go to adding items to the cart and you will check whether I am successfully able to add the items. And then you will go to the payment gateway and you will check you will do a fake payment and you will say whether it is getting payment successfully or not. Okay, so going from the inner part to the outer part is your bottom-up testing, right? Now let's talk about what do we mean by system testing. So system testing is basically like uh, checking if the entire software uh, as one single system is everything working properly together or not. That is called as the system testing. Now in system testing, you have different types. The first one you have is the functional testing. So in functional testing, you will check, does the software do what it should do? That is called as functional testing. So example, you can uh, take it like testing if you can add and remove items from the shopping cart or not. 
the next one you have is performance testing so in performance testing you will be checking can the software handle heavy use or not okay like for example say suppose a website is developed for 1000 users what if 10000 users are using it is my software being able to handle it or not or Uh, it if, if it is being developed for thousand users, when thousand users at a time are using, is it able to handle it or not? The if that is being tested, that is called as performance testing. The next one you have is security testing. So here, what you will be doing, you will be checking if the data whatever you have entered is safe or not. Okay, so whatever the passwords you have entered are they encrypted or not? Everything will be tested in this security testing. The next one you have is compatibility testing. So here you will check. does this software whatever we have developed is working properly in different devices or not that is called as compatibility testing so you will be testing if one of the web uh, sorry mobile application is working both in androids and iphones okay that is called as the compatibility testing so these are the four different types of system testing functional testing performance testing security testing and compatibility testing now let us understand about the next one which is called as the validation test so validation is basically test validation testing basically ensures that the software is meeting the user requirements okay so under validation testing you will be performing two testing alpha testing and beta testing now what do you mean by alpha testing alpha testing is basically it is done by the developers in their office environment to check if whatever the application they have developed is working properly or not in their office computers that is called as alpha testing beta testing is basically done by the real users okay so in the real world conditions like a trial version you are giving to a user and you are checking uh, if that particular use application is working properly or not so you are collecting the user feedback okay that is called as the beta testing so alpha testing is done by the developers beta testing is done by the real users now let's talk about the next one which is called as debugging so what do you mean by debugging debugging is basically it is a process of finding and fixing the errors inside the software so for example if in a login page right uh, you forgot the password okay uh, say say for example your login page crashed so when you type a wrong password your debugging should be able to find the problem and it should be able to fix it also okay see you have you, you have entered username and password you forgot the password you gave a wrong password so it should be giving you an option say for uh, click on forget password so it will be giving you an option to re uh, retype a new password or something that is called as debugging right now let's talk about debugging tech techniques so there are different ways to debug your software the first way you have is the brute force debugging so what you do here is you test all possible inputs to find the issue so you give n different types of probabilities uh, of your uh, inputs to the software okay and you will check how my software is actually performing so for example you are trying all passwords to see which one is causing a crash to my login page okay the next method you have is backtracking so backtracking is like you will start at a error and go backwards step by step into the code okay to check the root cause of that particular error so example say suppose if a calculation is wrong you start checking each step leading to say suppose i have written like first i wrote 10 plus i wrote 10 plus 10 okay after i finish 10 plus 10 which is 20 i say again 10 20 minus 10 okay so now it it caused me answer 3 so 3 is the wrong answer so what i will do i will go back where did the issue come so the issue came here so this is called as backtracking right the next one you have is cause elimination cause elimination is nothing but you are turning off the parts of the code to find which part causes the error that means simply you are, say suppose your payment is failed so you temporarily disable the payment feature to see if the error is somewhere else that is called as cause elimination the next one you have is print statements so print statements is you will be adding print messages to the code to check uh, if the values are correctly entered or not where exactly are we going wrong okay so 
say suppose if you want to check if a loop is correctly working or not so what do you do inside that loop you give a print variable so that you will check whether the iterations are happening correctly or not that is called as print statement the next one or the last debugging technique you have is debugging tools so you will be using tools to pause the program and to examine so like for example by pressing f7 if you are using turbo c editor to write c or c++ programs you can use f7 for debugging so it will pause the program you can check line by line you can write you can even give breakpoints if you are say suppose you are using eclipse ide you can give breakpoints there okay so that you can stop and at that particular line only you will be able to give values variables and check if that statement is correctly working or not that is called as the debugging tool so this is all about the various debugging techniques brute force back backtracking cause elimination you have print statements you have debugging tools all these are debugging techniques okay so this is all about your testing strategy which is ensuring that whatever software you have developed is te tested step by step and also your debugging is helping us to fix any problems that we find okay so this is all about chapter 1 of unit number 4 thank you